Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you the Recontrol MIDI plugin in Reaper. Now, the purpose of this plugin is to behave like a sort of front end for our MIDI inputs. And it could also be used to add more control to our MIDI and our virtual instruments or sound modules. So, the track set up here with my keyboard plugged in and a sound module, which is a virtual instrument plugin set to an electric piano. So, if I play my keyboard, I hear sound. But to add more control on the way in, we can add the Recontrol MIDI plugin. Let's go to the effects and let's add another plugin. And in the filter, let's type in MIDI. And this will show us all the MIDI plugins that come with Reaper. And there's a bunch of them. So the plugin I want to start with is the one right here the Recontrol MIDI. Now it's important that the Recontrol MIDI plugin comes before the sound module. And let's fold them so they're next to each other. So from here, we can adjust some variables. Let's start off with the MIDI channel. If you don't know how to change it on your MIDI controller, you can change it right here. Now in most situations, we can leave it on all, but if you want to change it to a specific channel, we can just change it right here. And then next, we have all notes off which is kind of like a panic button for MIDI. So if your MIDI gets stuck like this, we can hit this button and it'll send a signal to stop all MIDI. Then over here, we can show the log of what MIDI is coming in. And right over here, whatever MIDI is being played will show up, which is great for analyzing any problems. Let's play the keyboard. And all the notes show up and the controller information right here. But we could hide it right here to make it smaller. Then over here, we have bank program select. So we can change our presets right from this plugin. So let's select it here. Let's load a file from our presets. Now, the one that comes with Reaper is just a general MIDI file right here, but you could duplicate it and create your own using a text editor based on the presets of your sound modules. I created a custom one here. Let's use this one, the general MIDI one. And on the program, we could change our presets. They may not line up with this sound module, but you can always customize it later. So we're starting with this. We can change it here. And the changes happen on the sound module. Let's put it back to the first one. And let's turn this off. Then down over here, we could transpose. So if you want to play the song in a different key, we could transpose it right here. Let's go up two semitones. Or we can go down an octave. Or we could put it back to zero. Now, most MIDI controllers can transpose right in the unit. But if you're not sure how to do that, it's quicker and easier to do it right here. But this one is not in your MIDI controller, and that's Snap to Scale. This is going to snap all the notes you play to a certain key. So right now it's set to C major. So if I play my keyboard right over here, no matter what note I hit, it's going to be in C major. So if I hit the black keys, they actually repeat the note next to them. So that no matter what, it's always C major. So if I play this song, which happens to be in C major, it shouldn't really change much. Although there are accidentals in this piece, as you'll hear.
But overall, it still works. But if we change this to something else, like D major, it's not going to transpose it. It's just going to choose the closest notes to be in this key instead of the original key. So let's play the same piece and let's hear the difference. So the intervals are the same, just in a different key, which can make it really interesting if we change it from major to minor. Let's go back to C and check out how this sounds. Pretty cool. And we could also change it based on chords instead of key. So if we change this to F and go right here to chords, we could choose a diminished seventh and the keyboard's only going to play notes that are in that chord. So if I scroll up the keyboard, just plays those notes. And if I play the piece of music, it just plays the notes that are in that chord. So it's kind of fun to play around with. Let's put this back to C major, and let's turn it off. Now down over here, we have control changes, or continuous controller information. If we turn this on or enable it, we can adjust any MIDI continuous controller information that we want. Like the first one is volume. And again, this is MIDI volume, not the volume on our track. So if we adjust it right here, It gets louder and lower. We do the same thing for pan. Or pitch wheel. Or any controller that we want. Right over here, we could choose them all. Let's check out mod wheel which I'm pretty sure we're using to control the tremolo effect on this keyboard. So we can readjust it here. And where this gets really powerful is we can automate it. So we can click this one right here, go to parameters, and show track envelope. And it creates an envelope down here where we can record or automate that information. So let's try that. Let's record a piece, and let's move the mod wheel as we're recording it. Now just so you know, we can also control this from knobs and faders on a MIDI controller. Just click on it, go up here to learn, hit the control you want, and then hit OK. And then you can control it from any fader or knob on your MIDI controller but we're gonna do it right from here. So let's switch the automation mode to touch, going to record and play our keyboard. And it recorded on MIDI along with the controller change we were adjusting with that fader. And we could see it move on the fly. We could also choose it here and use parameter modulation to modulate it. We won't get into that now. Now I want to show you another plugin. Let's clear this one and instead let's add the MIDI tool version 2. And this is very similar but it has a few different variables or parameters that we can change instead. Again, we can change the input channel. We'll leave it on any. We can change the note minimum or maximum. 
that's going to adjust what notes we can play up the keyboard. And we could also change the input velocity, minimum, and maximum. So watch what happens if we bring the maximum down. It's not just quieter, the velocity actually changes. So that affects how the instrument sounds. It sounds like it was played a little softer. We could also use the velocity scaling down here. Let's put this all the way up. If we change this from 100% to say 50%, it's going to scale to half the velocity, as if you played it not as hard. And if you go above 100, it sounds like you played it harder. So I find this very useful for adjusting a performance after the fact. Let's say someone sends you a piano part and it doesn't work with the preset you want to use, you could fine tune it over here, make it sound like you played it softer or harder after the performance is recorded. Let's put this back to 100. And over here, we could do random velocity. Which is pretty useful if you have a performance with no dynamics. It'll kind of create some, at least randomly, with this setting. Then over here, we have output velocity, minimum, and maximum, which we could do a similar thing. And then again, we could transpose up a bit. Or down. We could randomize the pitch. Which changes the pitch after it's hit. But if you want to adjust that to not reset after each hit, we could set the pitch reset to no. Pretty cool. Let's put this back. And then down over here, we could change the output channel. So for instance, if the sound coming in on channel three, you want it to go out to 10, you could do it right here. And then finally, we can adjust the control of routing from original to destination or both. Now the way this plugin is set up on the track, it's not gonna affect what's recorded to the track. In other words, if we transpose it down an octave, it's still gonna record it to the track the way it's played. Because this plugin is happening after the recording. But if you want the opposite, and many times you will, we should put these plugins on the input effects over here. So let's do that. But let's do it with the other plugin. But this time let's put it over here. So I'm going to hold that Alt on the PC or Option on the Mac to move it and just drag it over to the input effects. So now this plugin is on the input effects, which means it's going to get recorded on the track. So if we transpose it or change the MIDI volume or the pan, that's all going to get recorded on the track. Let me give you an example. Let's say we wanted to ride this volume while we're recording it. So we can record it right down over here, but watch what happens. Then I can move the volume knob as it's being recorded, and that data is getting recorded with the MIDI. So if we go over here and switch this from velocity to volume, 
we can see the data right here. So we play it back. This is not going to move anymore because it was recorded on the way in. But we're still going to hear the volume change. So it's a great way of recording continuous controller information during the performance or even afterwards by putting these MIDI plugins on the input effects. So that's pretty much it. That's the ReControl MIDI plugin in Reaper. I hope you learned something, hope you can use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Mm -hmm.